Okay, Justin, many thanks for joining us. Ryder Cup is always a very special week, but just give us your thoughts on being part of the European team this week. Yeah, obviously excited once again. This is, you know, my fifth Ryder Cup. I'm only, only my second at home, so uh, it's just exciting to be back playing in front of a home crowd, and obviously Glen Eagles was uh, an amazing amount of fun, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to, to that field. Um, you know, get the home, the home crowd behind us and uh, playing in front of yeah, like I said, a, a, home, a home crowd. Obviously, we've enjoyed the build-up with the boys. We've had a fun couple of weeks. We've seen a lot of each other on tour. Um, we've all obviously been very busy doing our own things, but in the back of our minds, we've kind of been spending a bit more time with one another, maybe playing the odd, the odd practice round, you know, an extra nine holes here and there together other than we otherwise would have. So uh, we've all been preparing slowly but surely for this week, and um, you know, it's now upon us, which is great. On a personal level, a nice little windfall there on Sunday, but um, how much does that do for your confidence, the summer that you've had in general, just coming into a Ryder Cup? Uh, yeah, it does a lot. I, I think um, you know, I've been playing consistently well. Obviously, I think that's what the FedEx Cup ultimately, that's the, ultimately the way I won the FedEx Cup, was through my consistency season long. Um, and that obviously does give me confidence coming into this week. And uh, more so specifically, you know, if I boil it down, just to having to play that last hole to win, you know, the... The feelings that I face there are going to be very similar to the feelings I'm going to face this week in, in order to try and close out a point and win a point. So um, there'll be moments I can draw upon that this week uh, when, when trying to deliver for the Team Europe. Thanks, Justin. We'll go into some questions. Start with Mike Fall and Alistair, please. Yeah, we just had uh, John Raman here who seems to be floating about six feet off the ground. <laughs> Is there a danger of being too excited? And how, how do players like you try and temper that so he gets the job done and he's still pumped up? Well, I think John's 24, is he? Um, he's his first Ryder Cup. Um, he's a passionate player, so I think him being six feet on, above the ground is brilliant because he's already about six foot four, so that'd be pretty intimidating if he's, if he's flying high. So you know, I, I'd encourage him just to keep feeling that way, keep going, keep riding the, the emotions and uh, use it as inspiration and I think feed off it. I think for me, um, knowing a bit more what to expect and the length of the week, obviously, yeah, just to trying to build into the week is important for me personally. Um, yeah, and, and just grow into the week. I think it's only going to get bigger and bigger. I think obviously the crowds yesterday were, you know, fairly small out here when we played, but that was a good day to play 18 holes. And I think obviously we, the team have now a lot of the hard work under our belt and uh, we can now ease into the week and just start to build on the energy that's going to just ramp up for sure. Got a microphone too, the back right. Oh, yeah. um, what, what have your experiences been of um, Ryder Cup crowds? And do you hope that it's going to be a benefit being here in front of the home crowd this week and perhaps uh, put the Americans off a little bit? Well, I, I definitely hope it's a benefit. I think obviously <clears throat> three out of my four experiences have been being played away. And, uh, you know, I play a lot of my golf in America. So I feel that, you know, I never get terrible kind of like, um, I never experience any negative treatment by, by the US crowds, which is great. But I think uh, it's a very intense environment to be playing away from home. And uh, I think the one thing the Ryder Cup does is attract a sports crowd, not necessarily a golfing crowd. And that's going to be the really interesting thing this week. Um, I don't know what to say, but the demographic of the crowd. Whereas I think Scotland, for example, Glen Eagles, very much a purist golf crowd, very knowledgeable golf crowd, very respectful golf crowd. Um, and obviously, I would say, here in Paris, uh, I don't know, I heard 40% uh, uh, of the crowd are French and maybe 25% English and uh, the rest is a mix. So it'll be interesting to see the dynamic out there in terms of how that feels for us. And, you know, I would welcome uh, an atmosphere that's more of a sports crowd and a bit more raucous and, a, you know, and, and a bit more as, as we face it in America. I think that would be, that'd be fantastic to play in front of and it'd be a lot of fun. Got a microphone through front left. With your five rookies on, on the side, uh, obviously all of these guys have had great accomplishments individually. What's your advice to them this week as, as rookies? And it can, be an, can it be an advantage or a disadvantage to have that many guys who have not, been, have not done this before? Well, I think it was a disadvantage in 2016 for us, but I think that's a big deal being a rookie playing away from home versus being a rookie playing at home. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that our rookies this year are much less rookies by nature. 
um, world-class players. Obviously, John's been up at the top two or three in the world rankings. Obviously, Tommy Fleet was competing in major championships. Alex Noren wins very regularly and won here earlier this year. Um, Tyrrell, again, tenacious player. I think we'll relish it. And who am I, who am I missing? Oh, uh, Torbjorn, of course, yeah, who's obviously shown his mettle um, you know, to, to qualify for the team. And I've been in that situation. I think for the 2008 team, I was traveling and playing a couple of extra events on the European Tour to get in, and, and it's not easy. So anyone who, who qualifies that way, I think, um, has already proved to themselves that they're, they're ready for it. Um, but yeah, I think we have a nice mix, a really, really nice mix. And I think some, some rookies can be inspirational. They can just really relish it and, and put points on the board. And once they get a taste for putting points on the board, they're, they're as dangerous as anybody out there. I mean, we've obviously seen, I mean, there's many wonderful players who don't have great Ryder Cup records. So I think it's, um, it's important to not place too much importance on stature. You know, 18-hole match play is what it is. It's 18-hole match play. Anybody can win. That's why the Dell Match Play Championship changed its format because the number one seed kept getting knocked out in the first couple of rounds and the sponsors didn't like it. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, reputations don't mean a, a great deal here. It's just the players who, who find the inspiration on the day. Got it, Rick, on mic four at the back. Just in a, the, a lot of the Americans were uh, sort of celebrating with Tiger on Sunday. Um, there's a whole Tiger Mania thing going on. Just wonder whether you sort of actually getting the FedEx, does that sort of have a galvanizing effect, do you think, for the European team? I mean, is, this, is there some sort of psychological boost that the team can take from that? Um, yeah, I mean, the team have had fun. They, 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 apparently all the drinks are on my tab this week and, uh, you know, all that type of stuff. But, you know, be, we've all been having fun with it, so I guess there is that element. But I really think I've tried to curb the FedEx Cup. For me, it's, it, it finished on the plane over. I enjoyed the plane ride over. But once I landed in Paris, I was one of 12 guys. So um, I, I didn't want it to carry over into this week. It's, 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 uh, this week's about another job to do. Um, you know, I was happy for Tiger too last week. I think the golf world was. He's had an immense struggle the last few years, and I think it's brilliant to see him back. And um, I think it's, uh, it's good for our sport. So, you know, I was one of the guys celebrating with him, even though I was obviously in contention. I wanted to be doing a better job myself on that Sunday. But, you know, my Sunday turned into another type of challenge and um, one that I was able to overcome just about. And uh, that was exciting for me. But like I said, I think for me now, that's sort of, I can shelve that for another week or so. Maybe I'll, I'll certainly enjoy it. You know, it's a kind of an achievement season long that you really want to enjoy. But um, I'd like to, to maybe start that party on Sunday night and, and here for the right reasons because of this week. I'm going to have a microphone too at the far back. Justin, can you talk about how your role in the team rooms changed over the years? And, and do you enjoy potentially being the team leader going into this Ryder Cup? I think it's... Um, I haven't tried to be anything that I'm not. I think uh, I'm just trying to be, if I feel like I want to say something, I'll say something. And if I, I don't feel the need to say something, um, I think that it's really important to be who I am. And that's going to be what, the guy that's hopefully going to deliver some points. That's what talks the most is, uh, is, is earning points, uh, leading by example rather than, rather than talk. So and that's what Thomas has encouraged me to do. He's just encouraged me to be myself, and that's why he's been such a fantastic captain so far, is that you know, even in the year leading up to this point, he just put a lot of trust in me to be ready for September. He didn't put pressure on me to play in Paris in, 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 in June if it didn't suit my schedule. He didn't put pressure on me to do anything that wasn't right for me personally, um, and therefore trusted all of my decision-making to get here and be ready and ready to play and ready to earn points. So. Um, and that extends to the week and to the team room. Just be natural and be yourself. So, sure, my confidence through the years has probably grown. I've been able to play well in Ryder Cups, and sh and you know, if I can share experiences that are going to be helpful and meaningful to other players, of course, I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to try and be anything that I'm not. Let's start with Mike too with John, please. Uh, Justin, you spoke at Hazeltine about the course and the setup. Um, what uh, what is it? What how does this course suit your eye, and, and and what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, it's um it's it's a, it's a really good setup. It's a very fair setup, and it's a very challenging setup, especially with the wind direction that we played yesterday. There's a lot of tee shots with the wind blowing left to right, which is hard to fit into the fairways. The fairways are fairly fairly narrow, which is in stark contrast to how Hazel Team was set up. Um, typically, the Med Medina and Hazel Team have been very little rough, very fast greens. And obviously here we have 
quite narrow fairways, quite substantial rough off the fairway where you're struggling to get to the green, and greens that are rolling fairly fast, but, but not quick. You know, they're, they're rolling a beautiful like 10 and a half, 11, which is great for this style of golf course and these, you know, the surface, the, the type of grass that we have. So I think it actually will create interesting, we, we all know this golf course is a great golf course, lots of water. You're gonna see more, I think it's gonna create very interesting matches. I think in Hazel, Hazel team was a putting competition it, from, for a large, you know, for a big, for the most part, the greens were perfect. Um, you were winning holes with birdies. Very few times you'd make bogey and you, not many holes were won with par basically. This week you, you're gonna see a lot of holes won with par and it's gonna create a very different mentality and I think some exciting matches. Guys are gonna hit it in the rough and doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the hole. You have to work very hard for par on quite a few occasions around here. So very different type of, of golf course which I think will be fun for both teams. And I'm not saying it doesn't suit any team more than any other. You know, this is, you could argue, quite U.S. Open-esque. So um, traditionally, you know, quite narrow fairways, a lot of rough. So no one's going to be unfamiliar with this type of golf. No, not generally, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a, it's a wonderful finish here. It really is. And obviously, I hope that uh, a decent amount of matches do get to 18 because that's, you know, it really is a, a fantastic golf hole. Got a mic one down the front. How, how important, Justin, is it t to the European team dynamic that you don't maybe take yourselves too seriously as individuals in your team room and, uh, during this week? And was it particularly merciless on you, the video, or the impressionist? It seems possibly it was. What do you mean? I've got my gold, <laughs> my gold medal here, polishing it away. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it wasn't too merciless on me, I don't think. I mean, I think uh, it, was, it was all in good spirit. The more merciless, the more funny, I think, is, is kind of the nature in which it was intended. So... Um, yeah, they, they, they were all brilliant. What was the first part of your question? Sorry. Is it, is it important to the team dynamic that you maybe don't take yourself too seriously? It seems like a, a British thing, maybe a European thing, perhaps more than an American thing. Yeah, very much so. You know, if, if, uh, if you're getting slated in the team room, it means you're loved. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we've got a microphone too with Phil, please. Justin, over here on the right. Right hand side, sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, John Rahm was in here earlier on and he said that uh, the jet lag had him asleep on the physio table uh, yesterday. So I was just wondering how much has last week taken out of you, especially considering what you had to do on, on Sunday evening, and are you, sort of, are you confident you'll be sort of fully yeah. fit to play five if necessary this week? Yeah, actually, no, to be honest, I've had a bit of a dream kind of run into this. I slept six, well, probably five hours on the plane, and then um, I've had two full nights sleep, my first two nights here. So... Um, really clicked in surprisingly well to the time change, and um, yeah, I've had no, I've had no idle hours awake that I that I wish I was asleep. So, I've done really well, and hopefully that will start to pay off as the week goes on. Yesterday was an incredibly long day. Obviously, we played 18 holes. That was the team's uh, choice was to do that, get some of the hard work knocked out early, so we can now focus on easing our way into to Friday morning. And um, yeah, if I'm called upon to play five, then I will do. I think I've played 19 out of 20 matches of the Ryder Cups that I have played, so I'm sort of used to used to that in a way. Um, but I I will be ready if, if needed, yeah. I've got a car on my feet in the front Hey, there. Justin. Congrats hey. on the FedEx Thanks. Cup. Great to see you on Sunday. How important was it to you to have Henrik Stenson on this team? Yeah, really important, I think. Obviously, um, Henrik, he's... You just got to look at his statistics. I mean, I think uh, he's number one on the PJ Tour fairways hit. He's number one on the PJ Tour greens and regulation. Who wouldn't want to play with that guy? I mean, um, it's. Uh, but what he brings to the team is not necessarily great ball striking, or not only great ball striking. You know, he's a fantastic guy. He's got a brilliant sense of humor, as has been referred to today. Uh, his caddy as well has great relationships within the team, and certainly a great relationship with my caddy, Fooch. So. If Henrik and I were to play together this week, um, it's not just me and him that get on really well. It's uh, you know our, our four ball, you know the two caddies as well, create create an awesome dynamic, and I think that's actually an important part of it. And uh, you know Henrik and his family, I adore, and we spent a bit of time with them after the Open in Sweden. So yeah, it's it, we're definitely sort of good friends on and off the golf course. And I was delighted that you know he was going to be part of the team, and I, I don't think there was ever a doubt that he was going to be part of the team. I think. Um, you know, he's, he's the kind of experienced player that you want want to have. You know, and I think from a captain's point of view, he's, he's one of your reliable guys out there that, that you need to lean on. Question on Mike Four in the middle. 
Rosie, as the new FedEx Cup champion, I'm hoping you can offer some perspective here. Uh, Phil made the argument yesterday that the playoffs has helped the Americans because they're playing all the way through to the Ryder Cup as opposed to in the old days they would take four to five weeks off. Do you think there's any merit to that conversation? Well, I think our team's fresher than the American team. So um, it's going to be an interesting conversation for sure because um, – you know, I'm hoping that that's one of our benefits is that we, we're slightly more rested as a, as a team, as a collective group. And, you know, the guys have been playing hard, obviously, and playing under a lot of pressure and, um, you know, obviously as, as have I. But, uh, you know, I've also done a lot of things. I've made a lot of little small mini decisions through the playoffs to try and keep a bit of gas in the tank. I've played many less practice rounds than I otherwise would have. Um, I've skipped out on the Pro-Am in, in Boston and only turned up Thursday evening. So there's been a lot of conscious decisions my end to try and, and get through this week. And, um, you know, the guys that have been playing over here in Europe have played a lot less golf. And then some of the other guys on the team, some of the more experienced guys, haven't played all of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Henrik took a couple off. And so I, I really feel like we're more rested. So, you know, it's interesting. So that they, might be, they, they might feel like they're playing their way in, and our guys are going to have a bit of gas in the tank. So... We'll have to evaluate it on Sunday, but I'm hoping our strategy is going to be the one that, that pays off in the long run. So time for a couple more. Go microphone to you at the far back. Um, Justin, you've obviously played in all sorts of high-pressure situations as an individual. Is the Ryder Cup still a unique test of character as far as you're concerned? Can you explain what that test of character is? <sighs> um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think no matter how many times you've it's once every two years, so it's not, not, it's, you never get comfortable with it. Um, I don't think you can ever really walk onto that first tee Friday and go, ah, yeah, this feels, this feels good, or this feels normal. Of course it feels good. You feel alive. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Jose Miralathabel gave us a little memento one year, and it says, all men die, but not all men live. And I think um, what he meant by that is feeling that adrenaline, feeling that, whatever you want to call it. Um, but feeling that emotion, I think, is, is, is what it's all about. And I think there's, there's no more intense session than the first morning on Friday. That's what everything is, a crescendo there. And then uh, I think from Friday morning onwards, you kind of build into the week, and then you start to get comfortable. Friday afternoon, you're into it. Saturday morning, it's intense again, but, but you've done it before, the day before. So you start to build into the week. But no doubt that that, that, that peak on Friday morning is something that you anticipate and you're never quite comfortable with, but that's the beauty of it. And I think especially this year, the scenes around that first tee could be absolutely amazing. I mean, it's uh, the most incredible first tee shot I've ever seen, for sure. And, and, and this year, it's a long iron. You know, normally, you tee up the driver and just hope for the best, but now you might have to hit a good old three iron down there. It could be, could be interesting. <laughs> I'll take the last question from Tim on microphone three. Rosie, could you... Could you take us back to that pivotal putt you made at Medina in that comeback, uh, the, the, the putt itself, Mickelson's reaction to it, and, and whether that you feel like that was your greatest moment as a Ryder Cupper? Yeah, I think that has to be my greatest moment as a Ryder Cupper, and I think um, the momentum in which it created for the team, you're not, you know, you're not quite aware of when you're completing your match, but I think it happened at a time where people watching at home suddenly started to believe that we could do this and then the comeback was on. So um, from that point of view, it's been, you know, the story has been told to me many times, but I just remember I had a putt from about 10 feet to stay one down with two to play and I made that to give myself half a chance. And I remember walking onto the 17th tee and just forcing myself to stay aggressive because in the back of my, in the back of your mind, you'd be like, okay, let's just get a half out of this match. But I knew that the job was to deliver a point. We needed to have a, a historic comeback and a, and a monumental comeback. So to force myself to stay aggressive was my goal. And then the part in 17 was, yeah, unbelievable. And, that, and that's what kind of people remember is the part in 17. But that only got me all square. So my funny reaction of kind of waddling up there and, and not really going, going crazy. I, you know, inside I wanted to, you know, cannonball into the lake. But... Um, <laughs> I knew that I was only all square. I had to go to 18 and win the hole. So I, I remember just consciously walking as slowly as I could to get the ball out of the hole, get into the 18th tee, and then continue to play 18 well. So that part in 17 means nothing if I lose 18. And I was, I was very conscious of all of that at the time. But um, the part that I was most proud of was the one in 18 to, to finish it off. And that's the one that's not really necessarily remem remembered or talked about. But as a player, 
to make it on 18 is, is the one that counts. Okay, Justin, we'll let you go in practice. Thanks All for right. joining us. Thank you. Good luck this week.